Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the most exciting podcast on the globe, on the planet, in this universe. It is the Transformation Hour with your host, Jay Jackson, and it is the show designed to help us connect so that individuals, businesses, and communities can develop, transform, and fly to new heights. Look, Our main topics on this particular podcast are leadership, personal development, entrepreneurship, or anything to help you get your mind, body, and soul right. All right. But today's topic of discussion is a journey of leading from hell to abundance. And your special guest, yours truly, Jay Jackson. I want you guys to bear with me for a few minutes. I promise not to take a whole lot of your time, but I do also promise you that if you stick with me till the end, you will get tons of nuggets, tons of wisdom, tons of insight to help you begin your personal transformation as a leader within your home, within your business, on your job or in your community, where Ever you are, I promise to give you everything that you need to help you get from where you are to where you want to be. First, I want to start by helping you guys understand why I started this podcast. Look, the Transformation Hour started January 7th of 2015. And you're probably thinking, when I first started this podcast, I started this podcast as a hobby as an outlet to minimize my stress because I was going through a challenging time and I needed something to occupy my mind. I needed something to keep me energized and keep me motivated when I first transitioned from active duty military to the civilian life that I live right now, what I call life 2.0. And when I first started this particular podcast, I joined a radio network and I joined this radio network um, based on the advice of someone that I really didn't know. But I was I was a bit naive and I trusted them the right advice to guide me into this journey of life 2.0. Again, I was unfamiliar of civilian life. I had been on active duty military for 15 years and I'll get into a little bit of why I'm no longer on active duty military as we go a little bit further into this journey, into this episode. But I got screwed. Right After a few months behind the scenes, I started to realize, wait, I'm not liking the way this quote unquote. And if you could see me right now, you'd see the air quotes where I say, you know, this partnership because it was not a partnership. And because I'm not the type to kiss and tell, I won't give you all the dirty details, at least not out in public. But hey, I had to move on. It was time for me to, you know, branch out on my own. And so I did. I went out, I started um, the same show, different platform, was starting to build an audience, get really comfortable on that platform until this gentleman, Um, by the name of Paul C. Brunson. Shout out to my business mentor, my business coach. Um, This brother is doing phenomenal things. They tell you, if you want to know what it takes to be successful, find someone doing what you're doing and then model their behaviors because success leaves clues. And this brother is dynamic. He is doing phenomenal things, right? And so one day he shared a video and I can't recall exactly which social media platform it was, but he shared a particular video and he says, focus on delivering value and not being famous. And any of you out there right now who are listening to this, if you've ever been to any type of church, 
workshop, conference, seminar, you name it, maybe even listening to a podcast or watching a video on YouTube. Sometimes, you know, the individual giving the presentation, it feels as if they are speaking directly to you. And when he made the statement of focus on delivering value and not being famous, I was like, whoa, I thought being famous was how you were supposed to make it big time. I thought being famous is what it was all about. You know, I see professional athletes, comedians, actors, actresses, you name it. I'm thinking these cats are famous. That's what it's all about. I didn't have a clue as to what it really meant to deliver value. So guess what? I shut the podcast down. That, oh my, it rocked my world, guys. And so what I've done for the last year to year and a half is I've been researching on what it meant to be of value. And guess what? I've also increased my value. I mean, just off the charts. All right. We won't get into all of that, but I had to research and increase my value so that if he made that statement or someone else made that statement ever again, I knew that I was on point and delivering value to individuals just like you. OK, and here's what it means to deliver value for any of you guys who are out there wondering. Delivering value means either providing warm leads to someone who might need a connection through um, a relationship that you have in your network, providing a tip or a tool or an article or a book to help answer or a question or solve a problem that someone else might be currently experiencing in their life or in their business. OK. So now that we've got that part out of the way, I want to share with you guys a little bit about Jay. I told you that this episode was going to be um, a journey of leading from hell to abundance. And I want to share a little bit of my history to help you guys really understand why I'm so passionate about helping you, um, why I'm so passionate about just helping others and transforming lives and businesses. Here's the deal, guys. Right now, and you're a part of this mission, whether you believe it or not, you are a part of this mission. And we are on a mission to transform five million lives and businesses by 2023. And you're probably sitting there wondering like, whoa, hey, bro, we're, we're almost at the end of 2017. How are you going to manage to pull this off? And I'm glad you asked that question. We're going to pull that phenomenal mission off by podcasts, webinars, some documentary film ideas that I have coming, one-on-one -on -one coaching, speaking engagements, books, you name it. I promise you it's going to happen. I, I am, I've been challenged by what I consider to be my creator, source, the universe, God, whatever it is that your, your practice in spirituality is, I believe that we've been given a vision. I've been put in charge to lead us on this journey. I appreciate you for joining. And guess what? We are going to have a blast. Okay. But real quick, let me get into a little bit of, of in the beginning, what I call in the beginning. So as the oldest of four kids, you know, and the second oldest of 20 grandkids, I've had my fair share of opportunities in leading others. Right. You know, accountability rested on my shoulders. My elders directed their questions to me. You know, if we didn't complete our chores on time. And here's the deal. Often those questions turn to physical and emotional abuse by my mother and my stepfather. And I don't tell you these things to, you know, get your sympathy play because I don't need your sympathy. I'm just sharing a little insight into who I am, where I come from, what I've been through, hoping that maybe someone out there listening to me right now can relate to me and we can um, share this bond and this understanding of our experiences. And so because of, you know, that physical and emotional abuse, guys, we accomplished our task or our chores to the best of everybody's ability on time. Right. Because, look, getting a right hook or an uppercut by an adult when you're a kid, just not fun. 
Cool. All right. So during middle school and high school, I served as a captain or co-captain on most of my sports teams. And it was not because, you know, I was the best player or the best athlete because I barely, I rarely was. Look, I could barely jump very, very slow. But what separated me from most of my teammates and even the competition was my IQ. Right. And it's because my coaches and my teammates also trusted me to do what was in the best interest of the team, you know, leading by example, by arriving early most days, working hard, encouraging others. These things have been in my DNA since I was a kid, guys. And, you know, over the years, my responsibilities have actually increased as my family grows and ages. But here's where the best part comes in. The best decision I ever made. On the 26th of October, 1999, I accepted the oath of enlistment to serve in the United States Air Force. And I promise you guys, look, leadership and followership, it continued and they were paramount during my military experience. And one thing that I like to remind people is this. You must learn to follow before you can actually graduate to leadership. So make sure you keep that, guys. Keep that one tucked away because you will always need and under, need to understand that you must learn to follow before you could ever be a leader. All right. And so I admit, look, leading in the military in my early years, it was a challenge. I wasn't accustomed to following at that magnitude of service. However, you know, once I understood and accepted my role, we made magic. My military experience afforded me the opportunity to grow with the world's best and brightest, you know, leading to uh, multiple leadership and meritorious service awards throughout my career, in particular, air traffic control supervisor of the year. And listen to me when I say air traffic controller, I'm not referring to the guy or the gal standing on the ground with the headphones on, the bright reflective jacket, waving the orange or yellow wands. No, no. I'm not talking about those, ladies and gentlemen. I was actually in the air traffic control tower, clear for takeoff, clear for landing. It was a phenomenal experience, right? But I must tell you guys, throughout my career, I had a blast. I met some great people, did some phenomenal things, traveled to some countries that I never even imagined. For example, Bucharest, Romania, Mali, Africa, all over Europe. It it just was a phenomenal time, right? But In December of 2009, I visited a country, city, by the name of Baghdad, Iraq. And the moment I stepped off the C-130 Hercules, guys, I vowed never to experience war again. Look, I was 6,765 miles away from home. It was blistering hot. I was terrified. And I didn't know anybody. Furthermore, I thought, why am I really here? Was I created to die in modern day Babylon? You don't believe me. Look it up. Check it out. But it's a great thing, guys, that I'm comfortable with meeting new people. And look, I don't connect with everybody. And I know this, you know, it's probably not natural or it's unnatural for everybody, um, for, for most of us anyways, to connect with everyone. However, If it wasn't for the relationships that I built while I was in Iraq, I wouldn't have made it. My crew and I, we we kept each other at an elite performance level, key elite performance level. We studied policies and procedures. We ate dinner. uh, We exercised together. Guess what? I even broke my toe during the playoffs of a three on three basketball tournament. And I wore the walking boot for two days and played in the championship. Hey, what can I say? My team need me. And oh yeah, by the way, we won because that's what we do. That's what winners do. We win. All right. But guess what? There was a a great shift. All right. Once I got back from Iraq on, on the 28th of June of 2010, I landed in Baltimore, Maryland. And next to the birth dates, of my son, Keelan, and my daughter, Kyra. This was the greatest day of my life. However, I wanted more. My perspective on life has shifted. You know, I'm convinced there's a reason I returned home intact, physically. 
However, there was a war taking place in my mind. I was over 10 years on active duty. Therefore, walking away from safety and security, nah, <laughs> that wasn't an option. So look, I got laser focused on delivering a tremendous amount of value to my subordinates and my leaders, just you know, striving to be the best airman possible until I experienced a conflict. The infamous conflict was this, guys. My relationships and my behaviors didn't mirror my personal and professional aspirations. What I did was I associated with characters who just, it was just inconducive to living a life of abundance. All right. These characters included family members, individuals I once considered friends. Um, we abused alcohol, recreational drugs, marijuana. All right. Promiscuity. Yep. We, we were just wilding out. And unfortunately, these relationships and the behaviors, you know, they led to the demise of my military career. And I, I, Jay Jackson, take full responsibility for my role in that debacle. And I was court-martialed, not because of the alcohol, the recreational drugs, drugs or the promiscuity. I was court-martialed, guys, because I stood up to individuals who were in positions of leadership, who um, accused me of things that just were not true, okay? And now those individuals who are in positions of authority, they now acknowledge that I suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, and major depression. However, at the time, my leadership, they attacked my essence, said I had character issues, labeled me arrogant and many other things in public and only God knows what in private. Look, I understood the odds I was facing. It was a personality conflict with those who uh, are afforded privilege by societal constructs in their position. And I really did. I, I thought nobody's going to trust me over a couple of colonels and a command chief master sergeant in such a high profile role. I was the executive assistant to the command chief, which is the third highest ranking position on a military or an Air Force installation. And I had to start taking some steps to immediately um, start preserving my name and my stellar record. And what I mean by my stellar record is this, guys. I had recently earned the rank of Master Sergeant, which is an E7, um, at 13 years when the Air Force average was 16 and a half years, right? And although I was aware of the situation I was in, I was definitely unaware of what was in store. And so throughout the process of you know going through this challenge, uh, I won't go into all of the details. If you really wanna know all of the details, you can schedule a call with me or, hey, you can hire me to come in and speak at your next event. How about that? And I'll give you all the details. But throughout the process of, of going through this, there were just some just egregious displays of just leadership and character and a lack of integrity in terms of the processing and documentation and statements. And look, I've got all my records. This made it up to the Pentagon level, inspector general complaint level. Um, I've got stacks and stacks of paperwork stashed away. I won't give it away as to where because you guys know I'm sure Big Brother's listening. <laughs> but that's cool. All right. But as I paced up and down the, you know, the sidewalk um, waiting for the verdict, I tell you guys, it, it, it was just, you know, we all go through those desperate times. And during this desperate time, I called on God to save me. Look, I never lost my faith in, in my source and my creator during this entire experience. However, I was facing up to 10 years in a military prison for crimes I know I didn't commit. And also, I knew there was only one source strong enough, robust enough to maintain my physical freedom. And so as I paced up and down the sidewalk, I started to cry out with every amount of emotion I had remaining in the tank. All right. I asked for forgiveness and understanding, questioning like, why, almighty, why would you do this to me? But now 
I look back and I reflect and I say, silly me and my small little mortal way of thinking. I didn't see the bigger picture. Then out of desperation, the magic words came out. I made a promise, guys. During my prayers, I promised to tell the world about God if I didn't go to jail. You know, look, at the time, I had zero understanding of the power of words. Of course, I knew not to speak negative things into existence. That's what we're always told, you know, growing up. Don't you speak that into existence? However, this time was different. I didn't understand that the universe or God grants your wishes when they are backed by emotional energy. Okay? You have to really understand the power of your words, the power of your emotions, the importance of your vibration, what frequency you're operating on. Okay? I need you to grasp that one. But making this promise activated my God. <laughs> and I was found not guilty on two of the three charges. And here are the charges, guys. The charges were leaving work without permission. I was found guilty of that one. Again, I'll give you the details behind it at a later date. The other two charges were failure to obey a lawful order, not guilty, and failure to report to duty, not guilty. And I paid the penalty for the guilty charge. Literally, there was a fine, a financial fine that I had to pay for the guilty charge. And that was it. I wouldn't step foot inside of a jail. And maybe you're sitting there thinking right now going, amen, God is good. Hell, <laughs> I was thinking the same exact thing when that experience was over. I had given a valiant effort against the United States government. And depending on who you're talking to, some would say you won. Some would say you didn't win. Hey, I'm not in prison. I consider it a win. Well, guess what? It wasn't over, guys. In less than two months, the Department of Defense, the DOD, announced workforce cuts. And the criteria for cuts included individuals with quality indicators on their record. All right. This decision meant my time on active duty was over. Therefore, I was devastated. I thought serving in the military was my purpose. But I received an honorable discharge 15 years sooner than I had planned because, hey, I wanted to be in the military for 30 years and retire. But guess what? What hurt worse was I was five years shy of retirement eligibility. But guess what? Life 2.0. Here I am. And today I continue to serve a great cause. Today I'm still pursuing my passion. I continue to empower people just like you to become their greatest version. I told you through books, speaking, coaching. I aspire individuals to maximize their potential I help you make improvements in your life and in your business. And as a life and business strategist, I've added multiple streams of income. I've regained peace in my mind. I've also established and built relationships with mentors, coaches, and new friends. Each individual who has helped me experience quantum leaps. <laughs> All right, quantum leaps, guys. I have relationships now that are just conducive for living that life of abundance. And I ensure that anyone who enters into my human experience, and I say my human experience because I believe, I know, I, it's not what I believe, I know that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. Okay? So, but there was a time during my transition when I thought, you know, life wasn't worth living. Think about it, man. My life was completely turned upside down. How was I going to pay my mortgage? Full time single dad. How would I take care of my children? I was embarrassed. You know, my pride, my ego was damaged. It was tarnished. And that's because there were friends and family members who looked up to me who depended on me to give them some sort of leadership and some guidance and direction on their lives and even their career. So now when my life is in turmoil, who do they turn to? But however, guys, I now know God had to extract me from one mission and prepare me for the next mission. And so I say, maybe my military experience or, or, or the end of my military experience wasn't a debacle after all. So 
the next time you know you have an unexpected extraction don't panic trust that the universe has a greater plan in store for you all right this is some of the things that i teach the individuals who are my current clients uh, former clients members of my facebook community speaking of my facebook community look if you're not a member already go to facebook join my tribe it is called increased impact and profits with jay jackson you'll receive support accountability tips to create additional streams of income advice when you're struck and just i'm sorry stuck and so much more again increased impact and profits with jay jackson go join a tribe i promise you it will completely transform your life all right guys so here's the deal there's enough about me but i have a question for you are you ready to experience a complete transformation in your leadership style look we've all been in roles where people looked up to us for our leadership whether it's in our home on your job, in your community. People need your leadership to help them get from where they are to where they wanna be, all right? So in this episode, I just shared with you guys, you know, my childhood story of physical and mental abuse by my stepfather and my mother, you know, and then I transitioned in, in, in my t to my time serving on active duty in the United States Air Force. I talked to you a little bit about Baghdad, Iraq, Look, Baghdad was a phenomenal experience overall. I mean, of course, I didn't kick in any doors. There wasn't any hand-to-hand -hand combat, but I will tell you this. Uh, mortar rounds and improvised explosive devices are real, okay? There were several, several days and several nights where we were, you know, diving in bunkers, putting on helmets, and we were under attack. But it was overall, it was a phenomenal experience because I had the the pleasure and the opportunity to sit and break bread and fellowship with Iraqi citizens. I had the opportunity to learn about their culture, um, learn what they had been taught and conditioned to believe about the rest of the world, learn that they are human beings just like you and I who desire freedom, who desire to travel the world, who desire the best education and opportunities that life can provide them phenomenal experience all right but then i also talked to you a little bit about my court martial experience which i think that experience was was perfect for me because it was preparation for the future so i don't regret that experience at all i wouldn't wish it on anybody if i had to go through it again yes i would do some things differently but it was a phenomenal experience but now life 2.0 as a life and business strategist on a mission to transform 5 million lives and businesses by 2023. I, I really hope this episode guys helps many of you out there who are struggling in your current job, relationship, finances, your health, whether you're the CEO of your company. Here's the thing though. You are the CEO of you, right? I need you to understand that guys. And I need you to also understand that you must change and grow personally and professionally if you want to live a true life of abundance. It is a lifelong process. It is a journey that never ends. Even if you have a million dollars right now, and I'm talking just liquid cash, you might think, oh, I've got plenty of money, but you probably aren't living a life of abundance. Abundance isn't measured just in finances, guys. Abundance is measured in a lot of the things I just referred to. Are you doing what you love to do every single day? Do you have happy and healthy relationships? Are you healthy physically and mentally? Those are some of the things that go into abundance. All right. So by listening to this podcast, I promise you, you will receive a Ph.D. in transformation. All right. And here's what I'm referring to as just a Ph.D. in transformation. I'm talking about a complete, total transformation, a transformation in your mind, body and soul, a transformation in your philosophy, your habits, your relationships and most importantly, your mentality. And as an expert on personal transformation, I look forward to leading you on your journey of transformation. However, I must warn you, it will not not be easy. 
look, I told you, your transformation is a lifelong process of reprogramming your mind to shift your paradigm, a, a journey. It's a journey of development that will require you to read thousands of books and listen to more than 10,000 hours of lectures, podcasts, and videos. And look, I don't say these things to scare you away. I say them to prepare you for the journey ahead. But look, don't fret. I'm here to support you every step of the way. Remember, you're making these changes for yourself. It's not selfish to take care of you first. You must develop, transform, and fly to new heights to leave an impact on this world. There are tens, hundreds, thousands, and maybe even millions of people waiting for your brand of leadership. Your time is now. Don't wait until tomorrow. The world needs you to lead. Okay? That's all I got, guys. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to serve you. Thank you for spending these few minutes with me. I do hope and believe and just pray that you receive value from this particular episode. Stay tuned. Subscribe to the channel. We're going to have a blast as we continue on this journey. This has been the Transformation Hour with your host, Jay Jackson, and it's the show designed to help us connect so that individuals, businesses, and communities can develop, transform, and fly to new heights, where we focus on leadership, personal development, entrepreneurship, and anything to help you get your mind, body, and soul right. Until next time, guys, I'll talk to you later. Be safe. Peace.